Welcome to your piano lesson. If you are here for the first time, I am Gianluca Fronda. If you want to discover interesting facts about me, you can watch an introduction video of the channel. I'm leaving the link in the description below. If you like the content of my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I'm aiming to publish two weekly tutorials. Now let's dive into the lesson. If you have watched the previous uh, three tutorials published on Thursday, on the three previous Thursdays, you have noticed that I am finally talking about chords. And I invite you to study them, to watch them carefully. Because today I am going on, and indeed, these videos, these tutorials make sense if you, anyways, watch and study carefully also the previous ones. Obviously, if you are simply interested in what I'm explaining today, it is exactly the topic that you were looking for, it's fine. But I, anyways, I invite you to watch them. Today I'm going to move a little bit more the four chords that we have discovered, the one on the first, on the fourth, on the fifth and on the sixth. Would be appreciated some comment. I would like to know if you are understanding everything, if you are enjoying, if you are appreciating. And then plus I'd like to get some reply to the last question I asked. I asked to find the songs using these four chords, especially placed in this order. And it was in the previous lesson was about first, fourth, fifth, sixth. Today I am going to move just two of them, the last two. But indeed, in this lesson, in this tutorial, I want to also invite you to do something quite interesting. I have noticed, and it is easily understood, that by using four chords, we can generate different combinations. And which one is the easiest way? I want to share with you the secret. So, if you keep on the first column, imagine that you write first, fourth, fifth and sixth on a row, yeah? Or on a line, if we want to express ourselves in the musical way, horizontal line. Obviously, if you write many combinations, the first, for example, will generate a big column. So if you keep at the beginning of the block of four chords, the first, and you move the following ones, you will generate different combinations. I suggest to keep the first at the beginning, I would say six times. Why? If you keep the first here six times and you keep for two, the following two, the second chord that is the fourth, and you invert the last two that in the previous lessons were fifth and sixth, in the following one will be sixth and fifth. Then you move in the following two, so in the third and in the fourth, you change the second chord and you can use the fifth instead of the fourth. You will have the fourth and the sixth left, and indeed you have four and six, and then you invert in the fourth, sixth and fourth. I want to show in practice what I mean. So if, for example, we divide the... You take a simple A4 paper if you don't have any music manuscript. That's why I'm using a simple A4. You divide it in four parts, yeah? And we can do it this way. Here I want to simply keep the first at the beginning. And I want to do it, I can tell you immediately the secret, six times. And you will understand also why by doing it. We said that the last time we have used the chord on the 1st, on the 4th, on the 5th, and on the 6th. Now what do I do? I confirm the 4th for the lesson that we are going to have today. And I simply invert these ones. And I do. Today will be 1st, 4th, 6th. This is the way we use, we write the numbers using the Roman characters. And then I do 5th here. Now, since I have inverted these ones in this way, I can't do anything else, keeping the fourth here. And what do I do? Now I take the fifth and I place it here. And, obviously, what is left? If I'm using first and fifth here, I have to use these two ones. And once you can write fourth and sixth. You keep the fifth here, and you invert the remaining two ones. And then you will do the same here. You will keep sixth here, and then you invert once you write um, the two remaining chords in a way and the second time in, in the opposite way, inverting them. But we will write down step by step. What do, can you do here, if you want to carry on by yourself? You can keep the fourth at the beginning six times. And then you start moving the other ones. Then you can keep here the fifth at the beginning and you move the other ones. And you can keep the sixth here six times and then you move the other ones. In this way you are generating four times six patterns so you are generating 24 different combinations 
using just four chords. Remember that this is still the beginning. Using a simple rational method, we are discovering how we can connect the chords by simply using a little bit of mathematics, a very logical, really basic rational principle, if you have no inspiration and no idea. So today, I keep repeating, we are going to develop exactly this um, chord progression, chord on the first, on the fourth, but now th today, on the sixth and on the fifth. And let's see how it sounds. We will also be applying the same identical principle, the one of starting the first time with the first in root position, then uh, I will uh, start from the first in first inversion and then from the first in second inversion. And we connect the chords applying the same identical principle that I've told you, that is the one that has been developed in, I would say, in the 17th century and is still valid. Which one is the principle? We save the notes that we have in common when we move from one chord to another one, if there is any note in common, and we apply the contrary motion. What does it mean, contrary motion? If the bass is going up, the three top notes, notes, three notes played by the right, will go down, will all move down, looking for the closest note of the following chord. We also discovered that when the bass jumps, we have some note in common. When the bass moves, either one tone or semitone up or one tone or semitone down, so when it moves to the following note, nothing, they have nothing in common, the two chords. So today we play this second chord progression. Starting from the first, we are in C major in root position. I explain, what did I do? I move from the first to the fourth. Obviously, C major and F major, they have one note in common, it is the C. I keep the C, but I move the two remaining ones up. In this way, E becomes F and the G becomes A. Now I have to move to the sixth. When you jump of third, either up or down, you will notice that you have two notes in common. Indeed, F major and A minor, because A minor is the chord on the sixth, have two notes in common that are the C, that is the fifth, of the fourth, fifth note of the fourth, and also the third that will turn the first of the following. By simply moving down one step, the F moving to the E, F going to the E, you are moving from F in second inversion to A minor in first inversion. Here we are, very simple. Then, if I have to move now from the sixth to the fifth, as we said, they have nothing in common, because the bass is going down. A minor and G major have nothing in common. And what do I do? The bass goes down, the three notes go up. And this is the position of the G major. Let's repeat everything. C to F major, one note in common. F major to A minor, two notes in common. A minor to G major, nothing in common. I apply the contrary motion. I can start now from the first inversion in the right. This is the first inversion of C major. I will do. Let's double check. I pin the C. I move the two notes up to make F major. Now I save A and C to make A minor. And I move simply F down one step. And now moving from A to G, nothing in common. I move to the closest, to the right side, to the closest position of G to the right. And here we are. Now I start from the C major in second inversion. I do it again. I pin the C. The two remaining notes up one step. I say A and C. I move F down. And now I move from A to G. Nothing in common. They go up. Here we are. As you can see, the melodies are quite nice. If you, indeed, as I said, if you have no idea about a potential melody for your song, you can use exactly this principle, and look, comes out and with a very nice melody. And let's see the other one. And the other one. Seems quite nice. This one, maybe the last one, is the most exciting one out of the three. It depends, obviously, it's very personal. Now, based on this principle, I will be developing every single lesson, giving you examples, 
and probably reinforcing your confidence and you will understand. Obviously remember that by using simple four chords we are not discovering everything because the study of the harmony, the study of the chord progression I could say that it is almost endless if you want to really dive deep into all the potential styles. Developing all has been discovered by composers in the history and also by some writers or rock musicians, jazz musicians. But in, at the beginning, in these lessons, we are going simply to talk about this, the ABC of the most important chords. I say the most important because I want to let you use the three primary chords plus the sixth, the relative minor even though the chord on the second is very important, super important. We could say that it is even the, one of the three most important, for example, for the development of jazz music, and not only, also of classical music. But the second you will discover it is strictly related to the fourth, and one of the third is super used in, uh, let's say, in the music sequences, in very specific typologies of uh, chord progressions, and then also on the seventh, why not? And then we will discover that we can use a different bass for the same chord, not always the C having the C major having the C, but also the E and the moving the notes on the right, or why not also the fifth of the chord? But these are all things that will be developed step by step. Let me know how things are going if you are appreciating these lessons. Please don't forget to let me know which ones are the songs using these patterns, these chord progressions in this order. It's something that will help you enhancing your uh, skills, your ear, the musical ear and also many more skills. If it's the first time you're landing on my channel thanks to this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. All the best!